Hi everyone, this is a screencast on subcultural strain theories. Um, this is linked to the functionalist theories that we discussed this week in class. Um, the reason why it's going to be done in the form of a video PowerPoint is because we don't have enough time in the two hours to really develop our ideas of functionalism and also include the subcultural strain theory stuff as well. So it needs to be done um, at kind of additionally, so it's like one and a half kind of lessons on this. Um, it's linked very much to the work, as I said, uh, from previous week of Durkheim and Merton um, on functionalism. Uh, what we're going to learn then from this PowerPoint and the work that you're going to be doing in addition is what the subcultural strain ideology is, uh, who the main theorists are and what they believe in. Um, we're going to also look at does the theory offer any alternative perspectives to why deviance occurs. And hopefully finally we're going to answer the question does everyone deviate in the same sub to the same subculture? Sorry. Okay, so what do they believe then? Okay, um, the subcultural strain theorists believe that deviance is a result of different values from the mainstream. Okay, so thinking about this whole um, like a consensus value that we have, it's a deviance away from that, um, and that is through our inability to achieve the goals through legitimate means. So we look at illegitimate means of getting there. Alternative structure to those denied, in that you know, um, if we are de denied those goals and we can't achieve them illegitimately, as mentioned, we will look at illegitimate means and we will fall within a subculture because we aren't part of the mainstream. It actually kind of criticizes and builds on Merton's theory that we discussed, uh, the functionalist theory. So it's it's kind of a bit of a mishmash of you know pros and cons of that. Albert K. Cohen is um, one of the theorists and he looks at the status frustration. Um, agrees with Merton to the sense in that deviance is largely a lower class kind of uh, problem. Um, however, it criticizes Merton's in that it's much more of a deviance committed by a group rather than an individual. So Merton's really sees deviance as being something that's committed by an individual or it's an individual act. Um, Cohen sees it more as kind of a group thing so you know you've got um, groups of lads committing uh, deviant acts etc also Merton focuses very much on utilitarian deviance in that it's crime committed to gain something material so it's a theft or a fraud so we're getting money or we're getting actual material items and Cohen believes that Merton ignores this non-materialistic type of crime. So what about crimes such as violence or vandalism, um, which is just done as a, like a kick out at the, the mainstream. Cohen focuses very much on studies with working class boys. Um, and these face anime, which um, we I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on, what I want you to do from what we discussed in class. Um, but this anime is from middle class dominated education. So as you would have discussed last year in education um, and sociology, you know, schools set up to be a middle class kind of society and it, it, it benefits middle class people. Those from a working class or lower class background are going to have difficulty in that because of cultural deprivation um, and also the skills that they need to achieve in actually um, being good at school. This results in the being at the bottom uh, of the official status hierarchy. So, you know, those who aren't that clever and they don't have the cultural background and they don't have the material um, particles are going to be at the bottom of society. This leads to, as I mentioned, Cohen saying the status frustration. And that's in a what Cohen's saying though is the status frustration that we have the status of being at the bottom and being really low and it's an inability to actually adapt to being that low and at the bottom and that's why we kind of uh, deviate from the norm. It states that we reject mainstream middle class values and we find a subculture so we actually look at what the middle class actually values so that's like status and wealth and family and things like that and what the boys tended to do would be form or join a delinquent subculture, something that shares the same values and they're in the same situation. So you would never find someone from a middle class background who is successful and has these values, middle class values, joining a delinquent subculture. According to 
Cohen, we have this alternative status hierarchy, okay? And uh, Cohen sees these subcultures as um, being a hostile reaction to the outside. Um, and the reason why we kick out is being in spite or, you know, malice or contempt to the outside. So the reason we do it isn't necessarily because we can't get the money, we can't get the things, but it's the kind of a, like, you know, it's kicking out at those mainstream ideas and kind of turn them upside down as well. So if you think about deviant behaviour, normally in middle class backgrounds, we would actually be condemned for it. So society would condemn you for being um, like bad or for property um, vandalism and things like that. Where if you join a group, think about when you're at school and you know you, the boys join this group and they do things that are probably against the norm to kind of show off. Where So these deviant subcultures actually think it's quite cool and you gain a status and that's one of the reasons why we do it so we're finding an alternative status hierarchy so it's about who can be baddest gets to the top so if we're going to assess Cohen um, the strengths you know especially compared to um, the other kind of theories that we've come across uh, with Merton is that it offers a non-utilitarian explanation um, in that not all crime is actually for gain, so violence and uh, vandalism. Sometimes it's not about gaining those goals and values because we can't get them legitimately. However, criticisms obviously is this assumption that working class and middle class boys actually start with the same values. What if you never actually had the goals? So if you are born uh, a working class child, you might not actually have these goals in the first place of having success and all these things. So if you're not trying to get those goals, then you're not failing. So it doesn't really account for why working class kids necessarily go into a subculture if they never had those same values in the first place. Okay, the next theorists we're going to look at really are, are Cloward and Olin. Okay, Richard Cloward and Lloyd Olin, and they kind of again build on Merton a bit, and they agree that working class are denied an opportunity, and that these deviant acts are very much a working class uh, youth thing phenomenon. Okay, and it's because they deny this opportunity to achieve money success legitimately, um, and they respond to the situation by acting in a deviant way. However, what they look at is that not everyone actually responds in the same way, so you can't kind of pigeonhole everyone. So they theorise that there's different types of subculture. Uh, we're going to go over those in a moment. Um, but why do people not actually all go into the same type of subculture? Well, the reason for that is you can be unsuccessful in gaining your goals legitimately, and you could also theoretically fail in finding them illegitimately. I, uh, you might be a really bad criminal, so you still don't actually gain those those goals. So these are the three types. We have criminal subculture, um, and that is basically kind of based on where you live and whether or not you come from a background in an area or in a neighbourhood which is actually crime-ridden. So you kind of fall into an apprenticeship of utilitarian crime, so you actually start learning from other people how to commit crime and... Um, this kind of stabilizes a local criminal culture as well um, and you have a hierarchy so you have those who are at the top of the gangs um, drug pushers or whatever um, and then it kind of rolls down and you kind of work your way up so if anyone's seen like the wire or things like that it's a bit like that I suppose you just work your way up from the bottom next is the conflict subculture and this is more in places where there's a high population and we're starting to talk about like gang culture here so um, you've got a high population area and it results in highly disorganized crime because um, not everyone agrees on you know the reasons why they've failed not everyone agrees on the th the values as well the bigger the population the more variation you're going to have this is probably the closest to Cohen's theory um, but yeah it, it, it shows that people there was alternatives so there's not just one type so if you imagine you know people gangs vying for the same type of turf it leads to violence and infighting so moving again from the utilitarian crime into non-utilitarian crime which is looking at um you know not necessarily financial gains but maybe you know notoriety or status final one that um Cloward and Olin look at is the retreater subculture. So what happens if you're actually a really bad criminal 
you're going to retreat from culture altogether not just from the mainstream but also from this deviant subculture you're going to fall into this retreatist one um where you kind of just give up on life and you maybe turn to drugs or alcohol obviously this is very much not always the case okay so it can be very individualistic but a lot of the time you will kind of retreat you'll just become a recluse you won't get involved in any kind of culture so if we're going to actually assess cloward and olin um we're going to look at obviously most crimes are actually working class um however it ignores the crimes of the wealthy okay so what about the you know are they saying that just all crime is working class it totally ignores any kind of middle class or upper class um, crime so fraud for instance it does offer an explanation for the different types of deviance and also the result in subculture so it recognizes that not everyone falls into just one bracket but even with that how do you define which one you actually go into so it's it, you know it's difficult to actually say whether or not um, you fall into the like the middle ground which would be you know conflict subcultures or criminal because if you think about the mafia mafia could be disorganized because it's such a big thing or if, again the analogy with the wire it could be such a big thing but you also do fall into this like a criminal subculture where you work your way up the top it's very much a reactive theory so you know it's in reaction to this deviant behavior um does everyone share the same goal at the start possibly not you know um walter b miller uh, argues that lower class have their own values and they're not based on success so thinking about not everyone starts with the same goal so if you're born in a lower class family you might have different types types of goal to that of a middle class and also uh, miller basically says deviance arises from underachievement of own goals not the mainstream he calls this focal concerns going to do a little bit of homework on that today Okay, so more recent strain theories. We've got this institutional anime theory, okay? Mesner and Rosenfeld come up with this um, idea and that it's an obsession with individual wealth and this winning mentality. And it definitely comes from the American dream ideology where you will do everything you can, no matter what, and you will deviate from your norms. And it kind of becomes like a, a winner takes all, I'll do anything to actually get it. And it comes from a pressure to achieve these results. And it comes, you know, that's what turns it basically into a crime and it's encouraged. Education plays a major role. Um, within schools, there's a big focus on making you employable and making sure that you have the skills to actually achieve these goals. It's not about values. They don't teach you about values anymore. And then uh, there's been several things, uh, Downs and Hansen and uh, Savelsberg, look at this free market and lack of welfare equals higher crime. So the first one is that the more um, welfare, so the more money spe spent on welfare, sorry, the lower the imprisonment rate. And this was done on like um, a study on 18 countries. And Savelsberg also looks at uh, post-communist Eastern Europe. So once communism fell in Eastern Europe in 1989, um, then it actually saw a rapid rise in crime after that. Okay, so what now? Sorry how quick I've gone through this, but I want to try and keep these videos as short as possible. You're going to have to do a little bit of work now based on the theory I've just given you and some additional theory. So there is what you need to do. So I want you to answer the questions on the Google Form link, which is below this video on the blog. You need to be submitted by Monday. I want you to create a revision aid. So it can be a mind map or a table or anything like that. And it, what it needs to be on functionalist and subculture theories. Think about the bottom end, the requirements for solo. Is it relational? So have you related functionalist and subculture? Have you compared, contrasted? I want you to research Walter B. Miller's focal concerns and the six of them. And I want you to find or theorize an example for each of them. And then I want you to watch the video on anime, okay? What we're saying is anime is normlessness. However, there is a, a professor in America who totally disagrees with this and has done a translation of Durkheim's work and at no point does he say normlessness. I want you to look at this. It's only about a three minute video. Uh, this will go against what I've said and also what the book says. The web book uh, is kind of wrong in that uh, aspect. So that's what I need you to do. There will also be some other links on work that you want to do um, and that will all be on the blog. Hope this hasn't been too rushed. Enjoy. Bye bye.